this is not my slide, but I just wanted to show, so when Elima came to us, and this is part of my slide, but I, now I stay going all over the place. Um, I have a solution. Oh, you got it. Okay. So we, we named it Iola Aquaponics. Um, and it's usually in the culturally grounded family-based backyard aquaponics system to provide the uh, um, awesome fruits, vegetables, and fish that we grow. Um, the ad it addresses the health issues around food sustainability, affordability of these awesome fresh fruits and vegetables, and it's all healthy. And like how Ilima men um, mentioned, it does also help with healing with medicine um, products. This program curriculum, it was graciously, graciously shared with us by Balama Waimanalo, which is where, and um, produced from Ilima and her awesome gang. So I just wanted to show the next slide shows how we came up with the name Iola. So I, I is food, Ola is life. So the foods are living because they are constantly providing thanks to the system that we actually can produce. So the A is kind of the Ahupua'a system looking thing. So from the mountain to the sea, the middle is the acknowledging, honoring the Malamarine, the aquaponic system. And then the little triangles in the corner is the fish that aid food pr production. And it also is the gathering of all the family members within the system. So, and yeah, we thank Huino Keolopono, Malama, and Maoliolo Pharmacy. Maoliolo Pharmacy is a pharmacy that is located um, at the Cameron Center to help us with our Native Hawaiian population of medicines. Next slide. So way back when in June of 2019, I was talking to one of my friends and I told him, bro, we need to get into La'au Lapa'au. And he said, oh, I get the perfect person for you guys. And th on that day, June 2019, we met this awesome person. Her name is Ilima Ho Lastimosa of Waimanalo. She's the only, well, she's one of the people that I know. There's only black and white. There's no gray in this person. And should I help with five Huino Kiolopona employees, plus our um, pharmacist, Corey Lehano, who runs Maleolo Pharmacy, we started these workshops with Laau Lapaau. I, I believe it was like maybe eight to nine sessions and it covered like two months of her coming on a Friday, staying overnight, Saturday morning we plung plunging out all kind of stuff down to um, cough syrup for adults and children. We did um, lotions to take care of the skin. Um, all kind of all of these awesome medicines that she was able to help us um, to introduce us to. And as we got introduced to these things, we, we started to figure out, wow, we need to grow this medicine because she was actually going to Hana and um, gathering and doing all this inf um, thing for us while we was working. And when we would see her Friday in the afternoon, she would be like, wow, you guys, this, I, this part of the island get this, this part island, Part of the island get this, and we figure, hey, we gotta go start producing our own. So all of us, Bali all farm included, we started to go for certain um, land parts in Maui. Um, Ma Mahipono is leasing out land, and we're kind of a recipient going through the process at the moment to develop. Hopefully, the big goal is like educating. Um, elementary school kids, making sure the aquaponic systems is going over there and all these interesting educational opportunities. Um, it was, so 12 Hui no Kiolopono's, wait, wait. So we started off with the five people. Then we put it out to the staff if anybody wanted to participate. And 12 employees took this three-day intensive aquaponic workshop. She brought her family and friends and people working for Malama to assist us with, within three days of intensive aquaponic workshop training, we were end up to put, we were 
able to put up 12 um, aquaponic system in everybody's yard. Um, the conditions for this way to, was to teach what we learned. Thus began our work on creating a program called Iola Aquaponics. Sorry, I tend to get, go off the, the script, but yeah. So next. So this is how we started. Workshop photos, we had five people going for it. Elima is one of those aggressive, make sure we have a product. So beautiful products came out of them. You see it was done with a pen. Now we get one beautiful labeler. We're actually selling the products. We're actually producing this and we're working um, collectively with Maliola Pharmacy to make sure that these um, products go out. Next slide. So the Iola Aquaponic Beginnings, the orientation for our pilot project began on July 31st. We had four families. So now we grew up, yes, yeah? we don't need, we, we still need Ilima's help, but now we, we figure we can grow up and we can produce our own. So we went out and we got four families, 18 individuals in total. They just concluded their first in-person session. We do huakais out to native nurseries in Kula. Um, we have all these awesome Zoom presentations. That's the hard part, but you know, just getting all of the different families engaged in their own rooms or sections and talking story. What are we gonna plant? Um, oh, it's all talking story. It's communication is therapeutic and it's really good for each family. The four families that was chosen, awesome people. So they um, they will be continue to do more sessions before they build out. Our build out will be in November 14 and 15. Hopefully, hopefully quarantines is out of there. So we can invite Lima guys so they can see the product, the, that came out of um, Huinoki Olopono. The focus group um, discussion will be into December 2020. And we began a Facebook page on, at um, Hui with Iola Aquaponics. So please check out the sites. Um, and like I said, it was intensive, awesome things. We only have some, supposed to have produced 11 um, products, but with Elima's aggressiveness, boom, the 12th one came up whether I liked it or not. <laughs> okay, next. This is kind of fun, and you know, with the sirens and everything going off, I knew this program was going to be awesome. I knew this Zoom was going to be going good. So, Lisa, to you and Papa Ololokai, thumbs up. Keep up the awesome work. The impact that it has on the community, we are providing the community something that they were craving. They like culturally based things. Aina based programming in the way that the everyday individual can participate. We also, and not for, go off of the script, but we also have been doing laulea programs where we produce the product and some of the people have been coming to pick up the um, supplies. And then on a Saturday, Laurie Fatera, comes out and she does presentations where we put the supplies together and we produce these products. And it's been going good. It's, it's actually throughout the state now. And um, some people in the California is grabbing onto this. So it's an awesome thing. So we all are grateful that this program allows us to make and take the time for our Ohana and the Aina. The protocol is grounded. Even just noticing that the Ahupua area signs war making lays, learning more about how plants are medicinal and other var various ways they are used. Next. So the impact on Hui no Kiolopono. This program is one of the many with the last year programs that is aligning us with our mission. Just for putting a little word, we know Keolopono, and if you um, looked at Maui News, we just opened our pediatric department and we are looking for those native Hawaiian children so they can populate, yes, populate the, um, our doctor, Dr. Fox is awesome. He has, he has an awesome nurse, but plenty of products have been coming out of um, Hui no Keolopono, and I am so proud that I have the awesome staff to make sure that these things get done. Personally, it has brought the employees closer together. And what I mean about closer together, if things don't work out, ah, we get namu namu, but the object is for work the namu namu together and you know, produce like, sometimes we're not gonna agree. We all get different personalities, but you know, 
when we talk it out and you know sometimes yeah we take a break leave for the day come back the next day oh i understand why you're feeling that way oh, okay and we, you know that's communication that's what we need for align everybody with moving forward so we don't just work for the hui we participate in the programs i have gone through many of the programs at hui no kyolopona and still going strong connection it connects us to the community when we are doing it with them learning making mistakes I love to make mistakes because the only way you can move forward is no make the mistake again. <laughs> but it's all right if we do, just keep Imoa. <laughs> Troubleshooting, sharing with each other. That's the awesomest way that we can move um, as an organization as a, and as a Lahui. Next. I hope I'm not rushing. Anybody get questions? Just shoot them out on chat. Lessons learned, we adapt. Instead of succumbing to the pandemic, we created ways to help the community in other ways until we are able to come back to the normal way of living. Collaboration, we still collaborate with, with so much people. And, you know, take, getting, getting our food went into the Aina and stuff, it actually opens up opportunities in other areas. So we have been working UHMC, Mahalo Nui, for giving us the place and to work with to produce these products. Um, Maui United Way, awesome group that help us with some of the funding to get the aquaponics system. Malama Aquaponics, you guys the bomb. Um, those guys is hard working. I mean, you get the right team, awesome. Mahipono, community farmers, Aloha farmers, even the Pacific pipes, they gave us the pipes for get these things done. I appreciate all you got, what you guys do. Lowe's, thank you for opening up till 11 o'clock so we can just go run, go grab the products and come right back. Uh, and others that, you know, I probably never mentioned, but they all gave us the vision of Iola Aquaponics and our other cultural-based programs here at Hui no Kyolopono. Sorry, get this fly that's still bothering. Um, next. <laughs> challenges, challenges. So we have challenges and we live on this beautiful island called Maui no Kaoi. Um, the supplies here is really minimum. Um, so I put a challenge out to anybody. If they want to open up a supply store that brings in these 150, 180, 200 gallon tanks, rah, go be making money. Um, the supplies needed for Iola are not carried in amounts needed, and with shipping prices rising, we would need to work with a business interested. So when we first started doing this thing, we went to, and I wish I had the boy's card because he was an awesome young entrepreneur in Waimanalo, and I'm sure um, Ilima can talk about him, that he actually sells, sells them in um, containers and so we had to work with our young brothers shipment and beautiful young brothers you got to work with them too and they were able to get the, our products here safe and sound to, for us to um, assemble we would need to work with businesses interested in doing this kind of stuff um, social distance with the recommended guidelines meetings have gone online and that's the hard thing but it's all right Engaging participants, the kupuna, the parents, the keiki in a virtual way and building connection will be key factors when building the curriculum. Next, successes. So the hui is being noticed within the community of Maui as a viable player in the realm of Native Hawaiian health. Not only we do culture-based um, health programs, we also have a uh, um, pro, uh, primary care physician on board. We have two of them. We recently opened our pediatrics department with our Dr. Fox. We have a dental program here. We also recently, maybe two years ago, brought on the um, Ornish program, which is a reversible of heart disease, which is an awesome program. We have um, all these things, but we just need to engage back into our regular way of utilizing and working together face-to-face. -to -face. So that was my spiel. This is my contact. Please, if anybody has any questions or anything, please do not hesitate to um, call me. Um, yes, and 
Now I pass it on to the beautiful Ilima. <laughs> we do have a question. Mahalo, Joy. Do you folks offer kokua to people that want to bring models of this program to their communities, perhaps on other mokopuni like Kauai? So we work, and the Native Hawaiian healthcare systems have five um, different entities, and we don't like to step on each other's toes, yeah, because that's not what we're supposed to be doing. So we will be working with our um, people on that island to see if they want to engage or if there's a person that we could actually engage with. And yeah, why wouldn't we want to share the curriculum and moving forward? We like everybody have an aquaponic system in the back of the yard because, you know, so one day I was doing my aquaponic system and putting, I never engaged my family. So my son came, he's the carpenter and he went go back over there and he said, dad, how come this not working? I said, I don't know, you gotta pull out the, um, pull out the filter and then clean them out and then push it back in. Boom, all of a sudden, the Olena decided to start growing. I thought Olena was going to be the hardest thing to grow. Well, this baby started going for it. So I said, you know what? Had um, ceilings at Lowe's. I don't get ceilings. All of a sudden, within two weeks, we was able to um, reap the benefits of lettuce at, in our tacos. It was like, you guys, this is like happening. So now we're starting to do um tomatoes on one side, eggplant on the other side. And I wish I had a picture, but my son said, no take a picture, kind of ugly. You gotta keep cleaning out the area. And now seeing um, Ilima's thing in the back. Yeah, you gotta clean out the area because look how nice and vibrant it is. Mine's get brown here, but I'll also get the red cherry tomato, get the um, brown here, but then also get the purple eggplants so you know what it's growing and you know those babies on the bottom they were so small i went to a place they gave us a little bit but now these guys are vibrating and the only thing i stay a little bit hila hila about is to kill my fish in order to for us to eat them but going to happen but oh my gosh that is the part right so Take the challenge as it comes. So yes, we will be able to work with somebody in Hawaii or our system to see if they're willing to take that on. Mahalo for the question. Mahalo. Anybody else have any other questions? Um, I will go ahead and pull up uh, Ilima's slides while we wait. Okay. Um, shoot the questions in the chat. Uh, also for Malama Aquaponics, we're currently working on our actual manual. Wanted to say mahalo to Queen's Health System who recently gave us some funding to actually manualize all of our educational technology that we've been working on for the past 10 years. And um, really in the past couple of years, our team has solidified and done a lot of Paperwork, which Ilima don't like. That's why Lisa got the PowerPoint from Ilima at nine o'clock last night. Or maybe it was five o'clock, so it wasn't that late. But um, this is not my forte as far as doing this kind of stuff. So it is what it is. Um, but I wanted to share this. So this is actually our first aquaponics workshop. See my husband, nice and young. He looked like he's 20 years old, but he was like 40 something. Uh, he look old now. Um, but um, this workshop, was in February of 2010 at the Wamanala Homestead Halau. And I think some of you on the call was actually there. And um, what we did with this effort was we took our kids to Molokai a couple weeks before for Makahiki and we made them plan the whole event. And I couldn't find their picture because they were really young, seventh and eighth graders. Um, some high school, maybe a couple. I, I think we had a couple fourth graders. All of them are currently um, adults. The youngest one at the time is a senior in high school. And I think the oldest is in the United States Air Force currently um, serving his second term. So uh, it's really been around for a long time. It's grown quite a bit. And like it says, we cook and we eat. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to cook the fish. And if Joey not going to eat his fish, Ilima going to eat them because I have no problem. My fish know that they have a perfect purpose and it's life for life. So we know that the fish that we're eating, the food that we're eating, like you say, 
is very vibrant and very healthy. And it's not only about the food. And color might get back noise. That's the pump making noise over there. But um, it's also the the emotional connection to the plants and the food that you're actually growing. And then knowing that you put a lot of effort and all of the mana that comes from the fish and the water, it really, it really does make it medicine, medicinal. Whereas, you know, most, most of our food is coming from someplace else in the world, getting shipped in or getting planed in. So it's really not as fresh. I actually can come outside five steps from my kitchen to my aquaponic system, grab whatever I need and make something beautiful, happy, healthy, and delicious. Um, yeah, so next slide, call mine. And our fish, um, this is what the kids came up with in that first workshop. And we wanted to let people know, still today, got a lot of people feel the same way as others that, oh, it's kalapi, it's gross, it comes from the aloe, what have you. Well, I've actually taken fresh tilapia in a cooler down to our Limuhui workshops at the beach and start cleaning the fish. And nobody knows that they didn't come out of the ocean. And fishermen who don't like tilapia, because it certainly doesn't taste like what they're catching fresh on the ocean and throwing on the hibachi or what have you. We will do that. We'll actually clean and cook and feed the community. And then when they ask, what kind of fish is that? Where you got them from? I got them from my tank at home. You're welcome. And they kind of believe it, but it's very versatile, um, healthy, good meat, really thick. And some of you got to partake. And that's part of our learning process with our groups. Unlike the program that we had with Joy Dem, which is only three days, um, our Malama Aquaponics is usually three to six months and they do everything because a lot of people today, especially the young ones, never clean the fish in their life. So we have to teach them all of these skills. Most of them go to Foodland or in Waimanala, you go to Shima's and you buy in your poke or you buy in your fish ready to eat because it's already cleaned or skin filleted, what have you. And that's really not teaching them anything because they teach well, I should say that maybe 15 years ago or so when we first started talking about food, food sovereignty and where your food come from, all the kids think it comes from McDonald's or Safeway or Foodland or Shima's. They never realized that somebody's growing it and that you actually can grow your own food. And a lot of their diets was very, very limited. But when you teach our kids how to, again, go back to growing your own food, they're more open to eating whatever they grow. And so that's what I appreciate about this. I have had students who are young, you know, in elementary school today are in college and they come back, they work with me, they wanna teach, they wanna, you know, perpetuate what they've learned from us as Kanaka, how to do these things. And my, I was talking about my aquaponics and our summer work pro program, Alulike, I always highlight Kaulu uh, Pali Makaneole, who was my stu student at Blanche Hope Elementary when he was in sixth grade. I was one of the gardening facilitators and he was the rottenest kid possible, rotten. I honestly thought that he was going to end up in jail a long time ago. And today he's um, in his junior year at UNLV. He's happy to be home um, doing his semester this year, but he actually went to California right after high school got his um, AA with a certificate in landscape architecture. And the first year after he went, he came home and he called me up and I hadn't talked to him for at least six years. And he was like, Auntie, can I work with you? And in my mind, I was like, this kid is crazy. He made me nuts. And, and you know, but I gave him a chance. I didn't know what he was doing that whole time. And what a difference. He's changed in so many ways. Even his whole family was in our first hui because we had three hui with this program, Alam Aquaponics, doing clinical study. And one of the things that he said was that, you know, he never had time with his dad growing up, none of him, him and his brothers, because his dad was always working, trying to make money. And his father, through this aquaponics learning and, you know, all of the Hawaiian processes that we teach, has been so engaged with all of it. And still today, 
So Kaulupali, because he's well-versed in the way that I teach, and like Joy said, I'm very aggressive, and I'm very fast-paced because I'm all about hands-on learning, so it's easier for the kids to learn, easier for everybody to learn. He is actually a supervisor in a lot of the things that we teach today, and he's 22 years old. Like I said, I thought he was going to be in or triple C or halava, like really, seriously. Such a good kid, such an amazing kanaka, such a bright future that we have ahead of him. And because um, he hangs around all of these academics, you know, I always push him to do more. And I tell him, you know, you're going to be the PhD coming out of Pope school. And he, you know, when he first started hanging around with all of these academics, he thought it was crazy. But then when he learns everybody's true stories, he's like, yeah, yeah I can do that persistent consistent f's f after f in college but he goes back and he does a class again and and you know and that's what we gotta teach our kids because a lot of kids only know that if the first time you fail no more one hana hole which is wrong we gotta teach our kids that we cannot let other people this is health this is mental health spiritual physical emotional health we cannot let Outside others, the powers that be, the people in the institutions, tell our kids that they jump and that they fail. Because flat tire, that's how our kids end up at, at Koalao. You know, and I'm talking about all these spaces that are very near and dear to me. I've taught in Koalao. Taught the kids, the girls and the boys. And all I'm trying to do is teach them, give them hope because the white institution, the educational system that they import all of our teachers from is not good for our kids. And so when they come to my farm or they come to our classes or I go to them, I show a different side of education and learning. And the favorite word in institutions is no. And Auntie Elima's favorite word is do whatever you can do, no get hurt. And you better not cry. So I'm giving them the permission that they need. And we all should be doing that. Get rid of the no. Because we all grew up with the no and the ruler. Nowadays, they don't hit you with the paddle, but we got hit. You know, but it's always negative. We got to come up with positive solutions for our kids. And I, got, I wanted to share something about farm life. Uh, last year, I had one group of kids from Farrington. And was like three bus loads. And all the knuckleheads was with me. And all the teachers were shocked because all the good kids that don't get dirty and do all the homework was standing on the side trying to stay dry. And all the not rotten kids like me, I was rotten adults because I was on rotten kid, was in the lepo getting dirty, playing water because it was pouring rain. And everybody else that is the good kids that do all the homework was traumatized because they was getting wet and dirty in the mud. But that's the kind of things. And they were like, Auntie, can we come back again? And I tell them, you can, and grow up KPT, never did play with mud. All those male rights, that's all the kids that peel it to me because that's what I teach. You know, me be the best student in, damn, okay, I went college, but I only went recently. And I get good friends like Samantha and them that hey, we, I know how to cheat. And I don't like to read. But just because I don't like doing any of that doesn't mean I cannot succeed in life. And that's what we got to teach our kids. You don't need to be the smartest kid. And that's the only thing that they teach in, in school, in the education system, is you got to be the smartest. Mm -mm. Because you know what? Kaulupali is the best example to me of what one smart kanaka does. He used the assets that he gets. He's not smart in school. But you don't need to be smart. You just got to know how to play the game right. And then we win it. We, we can achieve. Anyway, next slide. Call him my own. Going off, off track. Holy stuff. Um, so not only we teach about aquaponics, we teach about recycling, reuse, reimagining. Um, this is a banana circle that we made in 2010. And the kids who made my aquaponics system a couple months ago, they also made, a ban I taught them about banana circles. So what we're doing with these kids, and I hope that they're coming back with the CARES Funds Act, uh, working through Pacific American Foundation, it was only supposed to be an eight-week program. It got cut short by the second uh, 
quarantine of the pandemic. But all of the things that we've been teaching them as far as farming, aquaponics, this banana circle, they become the trainers and they will go to the Kauhale in Waimanalo um, that Blanche McMillan and her husband, Willie Mac, run for the homeless, previously homeless at Kayona, well, no, Waimanalo Beach Park who have moved there. They're going to be the trainers. So we, these are kids uh, 14 to 24 years old, get nine of them, 10 of them. And that's their job is to teach all of these because hands-on learning, our kids good. They know what they're doing. And all they need us to do is just be there to support them when things might get a little bit off track or ugly. And I'm good at that. Um, we also taught them how to plan, do all of the planning, uh, getting all of the adults that can help them so with the support as far as digging holes and, you know, putting in the water trenches. But it's all about recycling. So this banana circle, if you see that big PVC pipe, that, that's actually running from the washing machine. So that's how we're teaching about recycling and, you know, using what you get. All of that fish is from the auction block, went into the puka. And Joy, yeah, look good because you're going to be doing this on your aina because I come in over there to teach you guys that. It's simple. And recycled paper, cardboard from Costco. Um, I wish I had a picture of it today because uh, 2010 we built it, it's 2020 and this bug is still going strong. And likewise, when these kids, I hope, come back to work in a couple of weeks at our, at our farm that they're going to see one very different of what they built and what they have growing currently because Auntie Lima was so good and I went water your plants every damn day for the past two months. You're welcome. Um, but when they was planning for this banana circle, I'm talking about the kids now that we had two months ago, a couple of months ago, they couldn't understand and it didn't make any sense to them until after they put it in and they implemented the system, the banana circle, they were amazed like, oh, Auntie, I I never know what you was talking about. I said, yeah, now you know. Now you can see. Now you can understand. Because hands-on learning versus academic in the classroom learning is very different. And so it uses different parts of the brain. But when we can bring the two together and merge, that's empowerment for the kids. Um, we talk about entrepreneurship and, you know, business owning. And that's all health because why you like go be the guy in McDonald's when you can make your own business and all of these things. Like Corey at Maliola Pharmacy. You know, he was the one driving Joey then to, he wanted to do aquaponics because he did it in high school. He wanted to do La'au La Pa'au because he heard about it at the Native Hawaiian Health Scholarship Program. And, you know, all you got to do is connect the dots. And sometimes that's all we got to be, gang, is the health, is the connector. Like you, Kealoha Fox, yeah? You're connecting everybody to this Pico Hawaii. So mahalo. Next. Um, this was actually one of our, um, I found this, I go to my husband's Facebook cause he never posts anything. So this was from long time ago and I was able to scroll through yesterday when I was making Lisa's PowerPoint and I found this. So this is our workshop section that we did uh, in 2013. And so that was my first semester of my master's program at, um, Myron B. Thompson School of Social Work. And we were supposed to do something. And of course, they want you to read all of those things and make you one, whatever it's called that. Sam, what is it called? The one you got to read 5,000 articles. Well, Ilima don't read. And I bucked the system the whole time. And the professor was telling me, no, you cannot do it. You cannot do an actual program. And I was like, yeah, watch. And so at the end of the semester was the same time that this program actually ended. And he was like, oh, that was so good. And I was like, yeah, no, no thanks to you, brother. Because you never liked me doing them, but we did them anyway. So myself, Trina at Papa Ola Lokahi and Poo Zablan, the three of us were partnering on this program. And we may, I, I make everything work. I connect the dots well. So mahalo. Next. So this is what the actual program looks like. Very hands-on, very touchy-feely, very get dirty, get wet, you know. Um, I believe that's what the way Kanaka learn. And if we can learn to teach our kids the way that they're going to learn best, our society is much better for it. You put them in the aina, you know, as long as they don't broke anything, especially themselves, they're healthy, they're happy, they're consistent, and you give them their own space. Don't be, a, don't be afraid of that kind of stuff. That's, that's holistic health. Next. 
Um, a lot of our programs, you can see, is very family oriented. Um, I don't think I put up any slides, but a lot of times when we have programming, the kane are pili to all of the tools and all of the things that are necessary to make stuff. For instance, the drills, the saws, the hammers, whatever, the cutters. And me, I'm the first one to say, brother, you know how to use that already? Oh, yeah? Okay, good then. Give them to the wahine who don't, never did use them in their life because that's empowerment. Yeah, teaching them. I have all my own tools that nobody touches because kane, they're good at making stuff, building stuff, but they're not good at putting shit back. Oh, they're not good at putting things back. So I have my own bucket with my own tools and I always know where it's at. And if somebody borrows anything and I know who it was and it's not back where it's supposed to be, that's my own mental health. I'm going to, my mental health going to come out and I'm going to rap because it's, important to let the wahine learn to do and to know and i think joey is a great example of that he got to see that of his um wahine that worked for him at when we came up there awesome group so next color my next i'm going on for tangents um again we teach how to clean the fish you know gut the fish kill the fish. you gotta catch the fish first and you gotta kill them so that's all a part of the process. Go catch a fish, cause you, and then you have to kill it, which is very traumatic for some people. But you know what? That's part of the learning process. If you want to eat, you got to do what you got to do to make it happen. And unless you like keep on going to food land, which is fine. But if the pandemic has shown us anything, it has shown us that nothing is guaranteed and doesn't mean you're going to have food. And yeah, trust that we're going to lock and load when anything goes wrong. And you're going to try to come steal my food. That's why... I've had so much inquiry since this pandemic has happened for aquaponics, for growing food, for all of those things, seeds, and we have delivered a lot because that was always the goal. It was crazy when we started. Everybody's, oh, that's crazy, not gonna work. Today, always, even yesterday, we had Ilima. You have another aquaponics program starting? Um, no, hello, we don't go on your schedule. We get one schedule, stick to the schedule. And if you miss the window, no blame anybody but you. That, and that's my approach is like, I give you the opportunity. You can choose to come or you cannot, but we're not going to start one program because you're ready to partake now. Next. Um, this was that same build weekend, the build program, how Joy is talking about. Um, so all of the families, Everybody comes, whether you keiki, kupuna, everybody in between, and everybody works together. There's making, I think, 15 tables. I don't know. But this is what it looks like. This is actually my dad's backyard in Wamanalo. When we never have aina, we made use of whatever he had. And we've had programs in churches, in schools, in backyard, you name it. Use what you get. Use your whole ahupua'a. And I've always believed that. So this is Wamanalo Homestead, all across street. Um, and my dad, you know, yesterday I was on one call for the past three days and they asked who was your significant, significant trusting adult and was always my dad because my dad let me do anything and I, that's what is resilient and mental health and health in general. I had one dad who, my dad then grew up at this house, you know, well, this lot in Wamanala Homestead and they had nothing. I mean, they had flour, 55 gallon flour from the military or whatever, hard life. So we was always able to do whatever we needed to do to better ourselves. And that includes my dad cooking all the food for these workshops, using his backyard and making it happen. And today when he see us doing stuff, going to other places to be able, he's like, oh sister, that's what he was working on. And he's so proud that Wamanalo can make a difference in the world because, you know, we're always at a deficit, always in every, aspect we're always at one deficit us why not whatever um and that's only based on other people's ideas ideals thoughts and ideas and and that's where it's wrong especially when they bring in um educators from someplace else that don't know our kids cannot understand how we operate as people and they like try to change you yeah see, that's colonization and that's a bad word so next um, 
Um, so this first slide, the first picture is at the Waminala Learning Center, at the Waminala Research Station, uh, building big systems. The middle picture is my neighbor right across the street uh, who was in our program. Um, that's their house because they never, you know, came to everything. They wasn't able to complete their system. And then the third one, actually the guy in the middle, uh, Randolph Kahumoku, he passed away a couple of years ago. He's my husband's good friend from when he was young. And Naholova uh, with the um, yellow shirt. When we first started 09, but 2010, I had all, like we had gotten systems for a lot of participants. And so, you know, that goes to the other people. And I went scab all kinds of different components and I had it in my old house on Nakini Street for months and I didn't have an aquaponic system. So he's 10 years old, he's 22 now. He's 10 years old in this picture and he came over my house, I think it was Memorial Day. And he just slapped it all together and I just was sitting there watching and he just made it happen. And I was just like, holy crackers, that was just too easy. But you know, you just give the kids the tools and the knowledge because he got to go with Uncle Clyde and learn. And I was, of course, facilitating. So I never really do the hands-on portion at the very beginning. And he just made it happen so quickly. And I was just like, you know, today he's a, a videographer and very successful. And never went to college. So just proud of all the kids from Waimanalo who make, you know, a difference in the world. Next. And then the fish. So um, it's always important to understand that homegrown, you know, on the homestead, Joey, eat your fish, Joey. Um, it's always a part of the process. That's the end goal is to feed yourself, feed your ohana, feed your community. Because uh, earlier I showed you my system and definitely I cannot eat all that food by myself. So all of my neighbors know that they're always welcome to come to my house and grab whatever they need. At first they thought I was crazy because I, did that from when we first moved into this um, community eight years ago. And today, a number of them already have their own systems because they, you know, after a few years, they get ma'a to Ilima and her wackiness. And, and now they come whenever they need stuff. Whether yesterday I had one of my neighbors coming, pulling out fish from my tank because her mom's tank needs it. And, and that's, that's community. That's community health. You know, do what you can with what you get. I always believe in that because that's what I learned from my daddy. Next. Um, so this is different kinds of workshops similar to what Joey is teaching via Zoom on Maui. But, you know, it's very backyard. It's very, this is university. This is a university work, a Hawaii and Manoa workshop in Waimanalo at the Learning Center. And um, that's what it looks like, you know. When I went to college, well, I should say, when I was in high school, I never thought I was college material ever. Even when I was in college, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here at 50, uh, 40 something years old. Um, not knowing that this, this is what college looks like. And today I work for the system and I work on a farm and it's my dream job, you know? So it's, it's college is what you make of it as well as, you know, do what you can with what you get. Learn by doing with hands-on and like Joey said, ah, class is always with aloha. Next, I think I'm a call. Um, like I said, I like to travel. So actually found this on my husband's um, Facebook as well. This was in Washington, DC, but we've taken the, the knowledge and, and the doing from a academic perspective all over the place. Um, been fortunate to travel a lot not knowing now. If I knew this when I was young, I would have went to college when I was eligible, maybe even sooner, knowing that they can take you all over the place and it's part of the, the process because that's not part of our realm. And so that's what I kind of teach the kids today is that you can go anywhere and do anything through the system or, you know, work with, do what you can with what you got and work with it. You know, that's, if, if I can say what I've taught other people is, there's so much money that we never know about, you know, because we're from Waimanalo and we're not smart enough to go college. Um, that so much money is out there for us to do it, follow your dreams and really make it happen. It doesn't sound doable from the framework that I'm from, but it is. Next. 
Um, this is my old system that was here a couple of years ago. I actually gave it to another family uh, to repurpose and it's actually going strong in their yard. Um, Tyler in the picture with the blue um, Malamahonoa t-shirt, I think he was first grade. I think he's in like six or seven grade now. And I just saw his brother yesterday in Hawaiian Island Cafe and he's like, hi, Auntie Lima. And he's so big and everyone recognize him. So it happens that time goes by and things happen. And we just got to give the kids the tools again. Give them the tools, whatever tools it is. Let them have fun, but that's all science. Next. I uh, just wanted to highlight, this is um, in Kohala, and that's Uncle David Fertes. Um, we're fortunate to go, I think, 2017 or 2018 to the Big Island of Hawaii with Kamehameha Schools and took some of the apparatus from um, Aquaponics Place with Travis Sato, who um, Joy was talking about. Uh, Kamehameha Schools actually bought 15 systems, and we went there for, again, a three-day weekend taught aquaponics in uh, Hilo side, and then it went to all over, including Milo'li'i, Kohala, all over the big island of Hawaii. And then Uncle David called us back a couple months later, and he was like, Ilima, we like do something. And so he got a USDA grant last year, and early, the, the month after we went to Maui, we actually went to Kohala to input aquaponics systems with Kohala and um, it's actually a multi-year grant so we, hopefully the pandemic finishes up sooner than later and we can go again but it's just empowering to take our team that's samantha who did the pull it early out with the red tank top um you know we get to go around and teach and learn and learn from them and that's the best part of you know aloha alo face to face is learning from each other not this zoom action next Uh, this is our Malama cohorts, uh, cohort one, 2018, that was funded by um, Jabsum. They had this big funding uh, OLA program. And then the other two, the middle one was our program that ended last year. And then the, the one on the right with the black tank tops was our cohort that actually got extended because of the quarantine and we finished in July, um, funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation into this research leaders program that's how we fund it currently and yeah next so welcome to the, the world of zoom and workshop so like joy was sharing um, what we do now is we have a meal where there's breakfast lunch or dinner depending on the time of day that our workshops are happening and then everybody goes home with all of their equipment and tools that they need to make whatever we're doing whether it's hanano eao art therapy, la'au, la'pa'au, and then we come together again on Zoom and somebody does the demo. I'm here doing the demo um, for this particular workshop, making uh, the Corona killer. Um, but that's, you know, that's the way it is today. And I, it is what it is, but it ain't the best way to, for Kanaka to learn. But we make the best and we keep on going. Follow more. Next. Uh, so this is Maui in february on the left your left and i'll see the plane on the way home from maui and then on the right i think i don't know um is kohala so kohala and maui doing the same stuff um similar stuff we teach everything that we can into a three-day starting from friday night dinner and and you know prior to this um work this right here starting this zoom starting we're talking about pule and stuff like that. And Joey brought up that, you know, we always got to start with pule. And I want to say that when we went to Maui, um, there was a lot of families that really never like be there with their employees, the employees that work for Hui no Ke Olapono. But by the time we left dinner, because it was a night workshop, starting to set the foundation for what we're going to do for the weekend so they understood what was happening. It was a very different, because we opened with pule and we closed with pule. And it's very interactive and everybody has to talk whether you like talk or you don't talk because I'm going to make A out of you if you don't talk. So best you get up and talk. It was a very different dynamic from when we walked into the workshop until leaving and especially when we was getting on the plane to come back to Honolulu. Talk about Ohana and team building and just Ohana strategies because 
that's what we're all about is community. You know, the unity in the community is amazing. And when you give them the opportunity to share their own skills, people blossom. Next. Give me no more next. So saying this is like the different work. Um, Ohana. So I'm going to be honest. So I'm going to just steal all these pictures from Jane because we had to do a presentation a couple weeks ago. And I'm good at that. Just went borrow from her. So this is just different workshop days in Waimanalo and then people's backyards because that's what it's all about. You learn and then you go to each other's house and kokua. Next. Um, and then um, two years ago, we started clinical, clinical data collection, which was never a part of our aquaponics program prior to 2018. Um, and we've learned a lot as far as data collection, how people's not only physical health, but mental, emotional, spiritual, so holistic health has changed a lot with this program. Um, not only the A1C, you know, your hip to waist measurements, what have you, how much you weigh has changed. Just the status of the people that participate. The people, like, we didn't just want Manalo. Maybe they never know each other, even though they live here their whole life. Very different today. It's like auntie, uncle, you know, very Ohana driven. And, and that's what we appreciate about the opportunity to bring the clinical side. And they actually can talk to each other about, oh, you know, I lost 10 pounds. You know, I did this and that. We're kind of taboo, right? You're not really talking that to anybody that you kind of don't really know, but now you part of one ohana and, and you can just freely see how you feel anyway so um we're talking about you know dissemination and implementation implementation science team science and traditional hawaiian knowledge it's all of that built into one program that is super simple to do but you just gotta do it to really get it to understand next so this is what i wanted to do in chat rooms but apparently you cannot do them on webinars so boo -hoo. but i just was this is something that we asked our colleagues in our workshop that we were on a couple weeks ago but what does food sovereignty and food security look like in the communities you like you live in and what does food sovereignty and food security how does food sovereignty and food security affect the way you live what does health mean to you and how are you practicing it in your everyday life so I don't know if anybody get time for answer the chats, but I think it's important for all of us to understand and know what it looks like because your definition of all of these things may be very different from mine, from Joey's, from Lisa, from Sam, from Papaolo Lokahi to God's Country Wai Manalo to everybody get their own definition. But if we can start understanding everybody's definition of what it means and what it looks like in Papakolea, aloha to the Papakolea gang because I saw you guys on and Kohala to Kula, to Waimanalo, to Wainai, to Kauai, and Kauai, yeah, we're willing to come anytime. Um, all Chota Payaina, everybody is different, but similar. And that's the one thing that we all gotta get to, you know? Growing up, you always think, oh, I don't like them over there, they live over there, but once you really get to know each other, we all the same. We Kanaka, we get the same koko, we get the same ideas of how things should be, and try for change them, back to the way it was, not to the way those guys like from be, but the way we know should be. Next. Lima, if you like, um, if someone would like to volunteer, I can open up their mic to um, answer these questions. So, hey, come on. Um, if, so if anybody would like to volunteer to kind of, talk about this slide, I'll just let me know in the chat and I'll open up your mic for you. No? Come on, you guys. I know you guys get something to say. I'm going to call somebody. Wait. Okay. Let's see. Lori, let me open up Lori's. Okay, Lori, I think you're on. No?
she no more her mic follow my okay anybody else how about amber i'll get amber are you there amber I put them in the chat. Aloha, Ilima. Um, I just said, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, I just said in the chat, you know, food sovereignty is building Kilina and sharing information, you know, being willing to share, sharing food, um, teaching, and then just learning from each other. And I think the awareness is an important part of food sovereignty. Um, being aware that you, no matter who you are, like um, Ilima said, like you can grow your own food. You don't have to be like, you know, super PhD Kanaka and you don't have, you can be non-Hawaiian, but I mean, just the awareness that it's possible, I think is is a, is the first step to food sovereignty and being able to just um, do your own, grow your own and be empowered to do it. Mahalo for that. Mahalo for that. Kim, did you want to mention? Anybody else? Okay. Well, mahalo for sharing. Um, Ilima, did you want me to move to the next slide? Okay. Yeah. Hello. So part of, you know, food sovereignty and sustainability and eating really is just feeding the community, whatever it looks like. And so in this pandemic, we've been lucky to have a lot of community outreach and participation. And so I just wanted to acknowledge all of the people that have come forward to feed all of our communities and keep us fed and healthy um enjoy for keeping your gang open you know so that we can service the community because it's important and keep on doing everybody keep on doing what you're doing because you're making big strides in our communities and everybody needs each other next so mahalo kako mahalo everybody your turn lisa <laughs> mahalo so does anybody have any questions comments um, I have a question about how long did it take from conception to actually operationalizing your aquaponics? Like to, you know. Are you talking to me or are you talking to Joey? Either one I'm of a, you. I'm a doer. I make them happen. Um, when a doctor, um, Kwai Tamaru came to Waimanal, I already knew what I wanted from him. And, that, and he thought I was nuts when I told him, oh, I like, dude, what are you doing in the community? And he told me, I said, oh, I want to do all of that in Waimanawa. And he was looking at me like, this lady is off her rocker. But I like it like that. Your turn, Joey. <laughs> yes, and learning from um, Ilima, it's basically like that. So not sure what you mean by conception, but maybe just the thought of doing them. So when um, Ilima started coming to us for a lao la pa'au, she mentioned that they started aquaponics within days. The conception happened and we brought them over and within three days, these things was built with the education and the training. So like how she said, nine weeks, it kind of got scrunched into three days. And it's flourishing. And you know, it, the awesome thing is like, the kids kind of see like the fish running around and we got to feed our fish, yeah? And then they, they see the fruit coming out and communication and like how Ilima mentioned, the talk story happening between families is awesome. Nice. Let's see, we have a comment. Um, I live in downtown Honolulu. Food is from the supermarket, but in senior housing, Meals on Wheels is easily gotten. Glad I just moved into this apartment and blessed with Heiau outside on Makua watches over us. Mahalo for that. Um, so any challenges? I mean, it sounds like everything is great. You said you there were mistakes made. Um, what kind of challenges? If some, 
someone wanted to do this, that we, would, we could learn from you? So there is some other challenges and, you know, I wasn't there for the class because I was running around doing, uh, picking up supplies and everything. And the challenges I went through was about the pH and the whole science thing about what your water's temperature should be. Did you guys know that the water up country is different from the water down in Wailuku? <laughs> well, it is. And you do you know that up country get like three different uh, specs? So one of them is cooler where you need your aquaponics to have a heater in it. Very awesome, but you know, that's the kind of stuff that you try out tribulations and thing work out all right. It's a thing that work out what I gotta do for change up. I having this issue with my aquaponics with the algae. So my quick fix is ah go run and go get one percussimus, put them inside. But the percussimus I get is this big. How fast can that? Then you could start talking to people. Never did talk to people at the um, pet stores, but then you start talking to them and oh, some of them so smart and you work in one pet store. You should be teaching at the college because very knowledgeable, very knowledgeable of, you know, about this bottle and the bottle is supposed to kill the algae. And you, I mean, you don't know that stuff until you start asking the question. So my thing is like, Believe it or not, I was very shy and I am shy till today. But you know, if you don't ask that question, you're not gonna get the right answer. Or you're gonna be try you're gonna be trying and trying when somebody already when go do that pre event that wheel. And instead of, you know what I mean, you can just move on. Okay, what's the next option? Because some of our staff was so creative that they extended their um, aquaponic systems. Where that first um, video that um Ilima showed where the lady was put in in the different pipes. You can start off in these little things and they just extended them. So yeah, very creative. And you know, the internet is beautiful with all this information also. Mahalo. We do have another comment. All of my fresh vegetables are in walking distance of my home to Tyrone and aquaponics in my backyard. Thanks to Auntie Ilima, I'm one of the 2013 cohort. Um, oh, so she, 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 ha she says, I have my aquaponics. I used my learning and system for presentations during my education at WCC and UHM. So there you go. Um, I wanted to say, I look, I hope to see many of you on at 12 o'clock on Nanaike Kumu from LT Lilio Kalani Trust as they um, released a book color my different subject, but I hope many of you are there to support this effort and um, all of the hard work that went into it was many, many years. Mm -hmm. so, um, and yeah, I look forward to coming to Kauai, Kauai. And again, our, um, our manual is actually being produced right now and looking pretty shaka at the time. So let us know how we can cook to all you guys. Mahalo. Oh, we do have, I would love to jump in on the next offering or cohort in Waimanalo. Good work. Yeah, so I uh, just want to uh, say that mahalo for those that have been attending many of our webinars and also especially for um, completing our evaluations because today is a result of the feedback that we received. We do ask folks what kind of topics you'd like us to cover, um, talk about. So uh, mahalo for that. And um, if you don't have any questions, I'll, I'll just kind of talk about some of the webinars that are coming up. So the next one for the scholarship program is on October 23rd, and it's with um, Andrea Hermosura, and she's going to be talking about institutional racism. And then also on November 13th is going to be Auntie Claire Hughes, we're gonna hanaho her presentation she did for Aina Momona, um, if you missed that one. And we'll uh, also have, uh, oh, and another thing is that then the scholarship program is actually gonna be presenting at the um, American Public Health Association conference at the end of this month. Um, and there's a Native Hawaiian panel of four speakers, which three of us are from the scholarship program. So we're kind of very proud of that. Um, and then uh, that will be, I think, on October 26th. And then I think there's another one, if Kim Bernie would like to um, share with us, 
Um, what else is coming up? Uh, thank you. I would like to. Is it possible to share screen, Lisa? Sure. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just go ahead and let you know that uh, in addition to the series brought to you by Lisa and the Native Hawaiian Health Scholarship Program, Papa Ola Lokahi is presenting two more, uh, here we go, two more webinars coming up. You look and um, tomorrow at four o'clock we have a presentation on Hawaiian Genomics 101. That's actually the first of a three-part series and we'll continue the science series into 2021 and it's going to lead up to uh, surveying the community about how they feel about participating in a particular national research project. We feel that it's really important to provide information to our Hawaiian community first. Um, secondly, on October 22nd, and there's been a teeny little change, there's an, an additional uh, presenter, but uh, we've got a presentation on telehealth. Uh, we are, tar the audience we hope for is community members from Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander community, but health providers are also very welcome. There'll be some good information and we anticipate a special welcome by Senator Brian Schatz. Thanks for the time, Lisa. These are a couple of great ones coming up. Mahalo, I'm looking forward to it. Um, another question, will you be doing any aquaponic workshops in the future here on Oahu? Sorry, I pushed the wrong button. Um, I think we were in communication with a couple organizations. Honestly, I, I don't know what has come of that, but once we um, solidify the manual, we do have to test it. We haven't decided how that's gonna happen, but uh, do keep in touch with us. I think it's malamaaquaponics at gmail.com. That's a good place to pose your question. And I'm not the one to answer the email, so you probably get a response. All right, Mahalo. All right, if there aren't any other questions or comments, I just want to say again for um, Joey and Ilima joining us today in this very fun <laughs> presentation today. Uh, we had a rough start this morning with the, our technical difficulties. So I call them out for that. Um, if you do receive the recording, there's probably just a part of the beginning will be um, cut off. But nonetheless, we'll still send it out. And then um, we also will have, uh, we'll keep in touch now that we have your email addresses. And then we can also um, invite you to future webinars. And if there's any, not anything else, um, I guess we'll just sign off and wish you all well. Malama pono, malama kikahi kikahi. And um, we'll keep in touch. Ahuiho, aloha.